TNTM The Show presents Gamagast 303 with your host, Pablo Gunas. And I'm JD, and we are Talk Nerdy to Me. We are here to talk nerdy to you about the comics for the week of the 13th of September 2017. That is correct. And uh, we are going to talk talk about the comics. I don't think any nerdy news has come out, really, other than it's just demolishing the box Apparently, office. yeah, it's demolishing. Um, I think there has been some news, but we can talk a little bit about that later. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have our own grading scale here for the comics that we read. Buy, skim, past, with variations on buy and skim. You know, strong buy, weak buy. Strong skim, we skim, and then we rarely, I don't think we've actually ever had a pass, have we? Uh, not I'm, unless I, it's like a number one, but, or something like that, or it's just like straight. Like sometimes we get one shots, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, not and often. Then we have contenders and runners up for our best book of the week, The Bee Bow. The, best book of the week. Yeah, back in bag of the week. And uh, we'll be dropping some spoilers, but we're mostly the hype men. We are here to hype up the comics and say, you need to go buy this. Spend your money. Shut up and take my money. Right. We don't go super in-depth. Well, like, depends. We don't go super in-depth. and Well, part of that is because we have a timer that keeps us on schedule, so we don't go too in-depth. We don't spoil too much. We mostly just, you know, get the main focus. And so... It's like the Wrap It Up box from the Chappelle Show. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so two minutes if we're both reviewing it, one minute if it's one of us reviewing it. And this is the tone for this week. If you know what it is, tell me, and I'll hook you up with a free digital comic. I mean, you probably knew by the first few seconds. I mean, really. Um, be, but, but be specific, please. Yes, be very specific. Because isn't it in multiple iterations of that series? Um, or something similar is in... Similar, okay. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, that's it. Um, I think, yeah, spoilers. You uh, covered spoilers. that, I think. Um, and I think that's pretty much it, right? Yeah. Contenders, we covered that. Yeah. Runner-up, b -bow. Okay, cool. Yeah, Let's this, get into this. So Let's this get is what happens started. when neither of us get sleep, you know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've only had like a couple hours. Yeah. But I'm going to start with a number one. We are going to start with the number one. It is... Generations. Generations, the bravest. I don't know. They have all these weird it's subtitles, like Captain Marvel and Captain Marvel. Mar and I just go Captain Marvel. Like yeah. to, for me, that like, and that's what I put as the thing is. Hey, it's just gonna be Captain Marvel. It's just gonna be Generations Captain Marvel number one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Margaret Stoll, Stoll is the writer. Uh, Brent Schoonover. Schoonover is the uh, artist. Uh, Jordan Boyd Boyd is the color artist. Uh, Joe. Kataraminga is the letterer. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. So we have Miss Captain Marvel. Let's just call her that. You know, just out of you know respect. Lady uh, Captain Marvel. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> she's just going up into these aliens. She just finds herself in this fight with a bunch of aliens. Uh, they're slave drivers. They're kind of just uh, beating the crap out of these slaves and you know, you know whoops and chains, just you know slaving away. And uh, she gets stuck in a pickle, and uh, this hooded figure kind of comes to her rescue, more or less, and comes to find out it's Marvel. Yes, Captain Marvel, and his uh, white hair and everything. Yeah, uh, and and his all bulkiness and like eight pack abs and everything, and come to find out we are in the negative zone. Yes, and uh, of course, you know, negative zone being popularized by the Fantastic Four comics, whatnot. Which we haven't seen. A nihilus. Yeah. We have a nihilus, right? Yeah, we have a nihilus. A nihilus. An a nihilus. I don't know. And he's like a little punk looking guy, man. He's not like all big and buff like he was in the uh, Annihilation Wave uh, or, the, or the Annihilation Saga. Uh, so, anyway, uh, they come up with this idea to um, gather up forces and rebel, I guess, and, you know, lead an army. So, what? And then they are kind of captured, whatnot. They end up inspiring all these people to take up arms and fight for themselves. And they do um, end up defeating Annihilus by getting his control rod. How typical, right? And uh, then they have this nice heart to heart about uh, you know how each other's you know how they've affected each other. 
And yeah, and then Carol kind of disappears. That's kind of the gist of it, really. It's really good art. I enjoy the heck out of it. I mean, it's a decent storyline, although I'm not a big Captain Marvel fan. So, yeah, I mean, I, I give it a buy, but not a strong buy. It's definitely a buy, though, because it's a good book. These Generations books are very interesting because you're seeing different iterations of legacy characters kind of put together. They're kind of throwaway issues, but they're still really good. Now, here's the thing, what I really loved about it. I really loved Captain Marvel because he was so, like, he was very officer-like. He's like, you have no um, composure. He's like, you know what I mean? Like, he's like, where did you learn how to be an officer of... Yeah, where did uh, you... Of the create Of the create Yeah, and like, so where, it was where'd just you so great because she's like, she's a real hothead. Mm. And so it was so great how they work. And just because they do have a romance and everything like that mm -hmm. um, in the future past, uh, whatever, it's weird, confusing. <laughs> it, but, at one point in time. Yeah, and I, I just, I love the way he was and everything like that. It, it was very interesting to me. I liked it a lot. And uh, and just how everything happened. I don't know. I, I had a really good time. I thought it looked magnificent. In fact, this kind of thing expo inspires me to get back into it because Margaret stole she th it was her first time writing mm -hmm. so now it seems like she's gotten a better handle on it on the character and how to better how to write comics because i yeah. think she's doing novels before so okay. yeah so i like said i liked it a lot so i'm gonna give it a strong buy and i'm also gonna give the digital code away wherever it is in here it's floating around somewhere book somewhere da yeah uh, so check it out let us know what you think f for Fin Fang Foom, even though that's triple F, but whatever. Uh, C for Cancerverse. Uh, M for Milton. Uh, K for Kong. Or King. 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 The Conqueror. Um, 3, 7. V for Victory. Uh, Z for Zarbon. A for Attack. 6. R for Righteous. And L for Loser. All right. Well, next up, I've got Scarlet Spider, you know, Ben Riley, the Scarlet Spider, number seven. And this issue is written by do, 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 do. Peter David is the writer. Uh, Will Sleeney is the artist. Uh, Jason Keith is the color artist. And again, Joe Caramagna Car Car is <laughs> Joe. If you could give me a holler, tell me how to say your damn name. But Joe Caramanga is uh, the uh, letterer. And um, let me go ahead and just cut through all this. We, ben has killed Kane. I mean... What? Or, or this lady has killed Kane. I mean, he's Kane's dead. I mean, flat out, he's dead. And ben is trying to revive him using CPR. Unsuccessful. And then this redhead, this nice hot redhead, she becomes death. So we're, he's been flirting with death the entire time. And, you know, Ben's like, am I going nuts here? And she just spins this nice little web about how you know, she's dated Thanos and you know Deadpool. And she's like, you might have the hots for me too, but here's why I like you. It's because no matter how many times you die, your soul goes from my my realm back into your body. And so you're, you're kind of an, an, un, an un, um, unattainable thing. Yeah, she wants what she can't and have. That's kind of the way most women are, you know. And um, he's like, okay... Can you bring back the little girl? Can you bring back Kane? I mean, she's like, I can do one. So he's like, okay, well, kill me. Kill me. And uh, that's kind of what happens. She kills him. And he, she brings back Kane. She brings back the little girl. And he also restores his pretty good looks and stuff. So he looks like Peter Parker now. Hmm. So that's where we leave off at. That's kind of a weird story, but man, the art was amazing. And again, this character is is my it's my it's my MacGuffin, man. All I right, mean, I love Ben Riley as a character. So strong by contender and two thumbs up from JD. Right on. Sounds interesting. Looks amazing. I'm gonna cover Runaways number one. It's three ninety nine. We have writer Rainbow Rowell or Rowell, uh, artist Chris Anka, uh, colorist Matthew Wilson, letterer Joe Caramagna, 
Yes. So we have um, Nico Minoru. She's just hanging out, being all sad, and then all of a sudden Chase shows up with uh, Gert, and she just got stabbed. He went into the past to go get her, stop her, but he was too late. And so now she's he's trying to save her, trying to get Nico to do saving. But her powers work, whereas like she can use spells, but she can only she has to do a new spell each time. So it's like with healing, how many spells does she use? So it's like she tries to learn like other languages and stuff. So she's she's like a doctor, and then it's like a podiatrist or something like that. And it's not like and then she's like X-ray glasses, and then like she's just trying to get do anything to get this to work and it's just not working at all. Um, and he's explaining this all the while, but at the end it looks like things may have worked, but somebody else is privy to, um, you know, cause he changed things. Yeah. I love runaways. I've always loved runaways, but it's, I, it's the original and I feel like it was a great thing but it's one of those things that I just kind of feel like it's really hard. Like, I just feel like you're rehashing. I want to see something new, you know, like you, even this, you're bringing her back from the past, mm -hmm. from the dead. And it's like, no, that's done. Let's move forward, you know? Um, but we'll see. We'll see. This is the first issue. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm willing to give a second issue, maybe even the first arc a try, you know? Uh, it looks it looks fantastic. It's interesting. I feel like the characters are well written thus far. So yeah, we'll see where it goes. Um, and I give it, uh, I give it a buy. A buy? Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, here's a digital code from El. Pa well, no, I I will be giving you the digital code. So uh, let us know what you think. Let uh, argue with him. Uh, tell tell him why he's wrong and why it should be a strong buy and why it's hyping up the. Hulu Runaways series, because that's coming up pretty soon. All right, so F for Fantastic, M for Marco, P for Power, O for... <laughs> Oculus? Oculus. W for Wesker, B for Beast, uh, G for Giant, V for Victor, uh, U for Human, uh, A for Avengers, a V as in Victor, and a G for giant. Alrighty, alrighty. All right, next up we have some action comics. Yes, indeed. What number is this, buddy? Number 987. All right, so their credits are Dan Jurgens is the writer, Victor Bogdanovic, Bogdanovic is the pencilist. Uh, Jonathan, yeah, Jonathan Glap. Is this a G? Yeah, this is Jonathan Glap Glapian, J. Listian, List Listian, and Bodakian Inks. Okay, and uh, Mike Spicer is the colorist, and Rob Lee is the letterer. And this is the arc called the Oz Effect. So. It touts that we are going to find out who Mr. Oz is during this arc. All righty. You ready, buddy? Let's do it. So we start with Metalla, and he's apart. He's kind of just, you know, broken apart, whatnot. And Mr. Oz is, you know, kind of touting, and Mr. Oz takes his kryptonite heart out of him. He lets out, take it out. And then we switch to Superman on the bridge, with a vehicle that is just, you know, fell into the ocean with medicine stuff. He pulls the vehicle out of the ocean or the sea or whatnot, and then removes the medicine before it gets, you know, wet or contaminated, what, whatnot. Yep. And um, then we see Jonathan and Lois and Clark all at the planet. And they're all kind of, I guess they're kind of introducing Jonathan to the planet. I mean, I guess that's kind of what it looks like. Yeah. I'm going to say the planet. I'm talking about the daily planet, of course. <laughs> and then we switch back to Mr. Oz, where he's got Doomsday captive and whatnot. And he, he does this nice little fun monologue about everything, about how humanity's all jacked up and how we're all selfish human beings, which he's definitely not wrong. We are all selfish. And um, he engineers these things for Superman to uh, kind of go save the day with. And Superman does this. He goes and saves the day, but he's not quite in time for everything. Yeah. 
You take over from here, buddy. <laughs> so this one, this is actually is in the news because they're like, oh yeah, Superman is protecting um, undocumented uh, or illegal immigrants from this racist uh, white guy. You know, that's like, you're taking our job. <laughs> so and it's like, it's just funny, and they're like, yeah, and and then uh, you know, it's in the politics, and it's like Superman's an illegal alien himself, like literally alien. It's just so funny that they're like. Yeah, it's propaganda, and it's they're turning Superman into this thing that he's not. And it's like, uh, he's always been an alien, and <laughs> he's not from this country. He's not even from this planet. So uh, the ending was pretty crazy, but it's also confusing. So we'll see where it goes next. Yeah, Oz confronts him. He takes him to the fortress. We finally get the revelation. And we get to see who Miss Dr. Oz, Mr. Oz is. And it's definitely not anybody I had thrown out and thought no. of. No. Uh -uh. I mean, I, I never pegged this whatsoever. So I, I thought this is a strong buy oh, contender, yeah. man. For sure. And then that lithograph um, uh, uh, cover here that you got uh, with all the, the bodies and stuff. I mean, that's pretty wicked, man. So strong by contender, right? Strong by contender. All right, cool. Now it's on to the defenders. Numero five. That's right. We have a writer, Brian Michael Bendis, my homeboy BMB, artist, David Marquez, color artist, Justin Ponsor, letter, Corey Petit. And so, uh, yeah, it's, oh, it's just uh, Iron Fist, and he's all messed up. And, and the then night nurse. They're talking to the night nurse, and he's like, oh, just, oh, I didn't, I haven't bought this building for you. Okay, it's yours. Yeah. This building's yours. You're always taking care of us. And then they're like, oh, yeah, um, Diamondback sure. got loose. And they're like, I know how it happened. And so they kind of, they show you what happened. Yeah. And so he's essentially just talking trash to Punisher because they both got captured. And so I think Punisher just... He for and it's crazy because they didn't actually show what he did. I felt like that would have been a powerful moment to like see him like because you don't really see him like lose his composure too much, mm -hmm. um, even though he's kind of crazy. And then I love just like the constant like how they're all talking Daring. about you know like, just Daredevil like hey Gary or they're like hey that was a boxing reference you do a lot of boxing references are you a boxer named Gary <laughs> and like it's just so <laughs> funny. And then they talk to this lady who's just like. Um, kind of like an information broker, like, you know, kind of like a, or like, um, a mediator sort of type thing too. Um, and, but something happens. And so I think, uh, yeah, they're going to need, or she's going to give up the info. And then the ending is crazy yeah. with Black Cat. The cat and it confronts, uh, I guess this is Diamondback here. Diamondback shows up at her place and. It doesn't end well for one of the two of them. Yeah. Let's just leave it at that. And you also find out, uh, you know, if they, if, if one of them is inhuman or has powers, what kind of powers, you know, uh, is a mutant or whatever. That's what's discovered at the end of that. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's bad. It's scary. It's pretty dang interesting, man. I mean, I, I just picked up the defenders because I heard about what happened. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, I got to lead this. I, I got I to get up into this and, and. Find out what's going on because man, that's this is a big announcement. It's a big event, and uh, I was totally not disappointed. This is a strong buy. This is a contender. This is a good book. Absolutely, for sure, looks amazing. And here is a digital code: F for Familia, Z for Zoro, and for Marcos. S for Senorita, W for Werita, B for Barrio Nuevo, S for Senorita, D for Diego, H for Hector, S for Senorita, D for Diego, and another D for Diego. All right, next up we have a Dark Knights Metal number two. Metal. It's so metal. metal. It's written by Scott the, so the Sword Sovereign Snyder, a Greg the Lead Thrasher Capullo, uh, Jonathan, the Jolt of Lightning, Lightning. Gal Lapion. Yeah. And FDC, the Fallen. FCO. FCO, uh, the Fallen Blasencia. Yes. Uh, and th that's just the credits. I mean, it doesn't tell us who does what. And I'm pretty sure, you know, Snyder's doing the writing, you know, so forth and so on. Right. Yeah. All right. Take it away, buddy. So this one was freaking awesome, dude. Like, I. Uh, 
So they're all chasing Batman. They catch up with him. He has a distraction, and this distraction was so great. <laughs> uh, he uses Clayface, but it's so I love it because he's, he's like, like it's so Superman's like, Batman. I know your heart, I know your heartbeat, and so he tricks Superman even like it's so awesome. And then they use he uses like Swamp Thing as well, and like as a distraction, like he's just distracting them like crazy. Yeah. And he's just trying to do this thing himself the whole way. We see like the Legion, Legion of, of Doom, Doom, which was yeah. cool. That was freaking sick. And then just like all this stuff that's going on. But and then this baby dark side, yeah, right? So that it was looks neat. Like, it's like, like what the hell? Oh, I was like, what? And then like they're just talking about like the Court of Owls, and then this other Batman shows up with these Robins, and then like this whole they're, like the ball like, of, and of stuff. like evil Batman from the dark from the dark universe universe. universe. Like and it's just yeah, it's freaking crazy and awesome, and it's Meta. It's like this is what I was waiting for. Like this to go like sideways. crazy and ter- yes, yeah, sideways and terrifying, and just be like, man, I love the twists and the turns. It was brilliant. Bruce is like trying to do things on his own because he's a one man wolf yeah. pack, but he does have help. Like he does have the he has the other the bat, family. The bat family helping him and stuff. So th- he is getting help from somebody, and he is he knows kind of what's going on that they're trying to use him as the um like as the source to get like the connection to get into this universe Mm -hmm. and i love it because it's they you don't have to read any of schneider's other stuff they explain it all in this book how it has and it makes me go like oh man now i want to go like buy the graphic novels of all of his stuff like even though I've read it, like to see the connections that led up to this, yes. you know, because it's brilliant, it's brilliant, it's magnificent, it's awesome, it's wicked, it's metal. Yeah, totally, totally metal, metal. I give it, I give it two. You know, I give it two of these. Strong by contender. Agreed, without a doubt. No doubt, it, it's awesome. All right, next up we have some Weapon X. What number is this? Uh, eight. It's eight, okay. The Ocho. The Ocho. Writers. Writers Greg, Greg pa- Pak and Fred Van Lente. Artists. Mark Borstel and Ibram Roberson. Colorist. Frank D. Armata. And Letterer. Joe Caramagna. Here we go. So we have this wicked looking Hulk. Hulk Wolverine. Uh, he's like great. Well, yeah, they call him Hulk Vereen, but you have to remember that he also has Domino, Domino's powers as well as Warp. I think it's Warpath, right? Yeah, Warpath's yeah, Warpath. powers, um, Yuriko's powers or abilities, Death, Strike. Death Strikes, Sabretooth, like all of them. He has the he's the whole Weapon X. He's the whole Weapon. He's the whole King Caboodle. Yeah, in one, it's pretty sick. He kind of looks like uh, he kind of looks like Doomsday, sort of. Yeah, um, and he whoops everybody. He whoops up. on I everybody. Mean, it's so great, and it's funny all the, because all the guys that have healing factor get all screwed up, wrecked. Right? I mean, they get completely wrecked where they need to have hospital beds to freaking heal. I thought Old Man Logan was legit dead, and I love how Domino is the only one saying she's like, "You guys got your butts whooped. What's up with that? I don't even have a healing ability." And Old Man Logan explains. He took us out according to like threat, threat level, so which was interesting because he took out Warpath first, I mm-hmm. think Sabretooth, yeah, and then Old Man Logan, and then Lady Deathstrike. Lady Deathstrike, yeah, and, and then of course he did go after Domino as well, but not as bad, yeah. So and then he's also having flashbacks of when he, he was in some war, probably Kandahar, you know, considering that's where we're you know going at this point. It seems it's most everything ties back into that anyway. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, because there's those flashbacks and stuff, and they're trying to figure out, and they're, they've come to hunt him down, and Sabretooth, I love how him, I love how there's this, even though they're teamed up, there's still this tension between... Well, old man Logan and Sabretooth. Yes, between Logan and uh, Victor Creed, right? Um, but then they have this person show up at the end that's like, what you need is, is a Wolverine. <laughs> yeah. And it's awesome. Uh, it was Very so good cool. reveal. Yes. So it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Do we need to say any more? I don't think we do. I think it's a strong buy. I think it's a contender. I think we're going to both agree. Obviously. I mean, this is a great book. This is a great series. This is a great arc. Writers, 
artist. I, mean, I feel like the art not, is more colorful and more, but it's very, it's like semi-realistic is yeah. what it is. So it's not bad. So here's the digital code. Let us know what you think. And uh, yeah, again, agree with us because this is agree with us. <laughs> there, there's no other opinion here. I mean, <laughs> you're wrong. No, <laughs> I mean, I, I would disagree with you, but we'd be wrong. I mean, <laughs> anyway, here's, here's the digital code. Uh, eight N is in uh, November. W is in Wesker. I is in India. Uh, T is Tomas. Uh, seven two R is in Romeo, uh, M is Marco, U is in Umbrella, N is in Novella, and five. Cool. Time for some X Men Blue. Ble it's number eleven. Blue. We got writer Colin Bunn, artist Ble Douglas Franchin, inker Scott Hanna, color artist Guru EFX, letter Corey Petit. Cor Cor Petit. Are you, are you taking fun of me, man? <laughs> What's up? No. What's up, man? No. All right, anyway. Uh, <laughs> just the South in general. No. <laughs> so, yeah, we have this lady. What? What's her name? The Goblin Queen. The Goblin Queen, but she reveals herself. Hold on. If if by history you have not read Marvel comics or X-Men comics from the 1970s, 1880s on to now, the Goblin Queen is Madeline Pryor. It has never been anybody different. Madeline Pryor is the Goblin Queen. It has never changed. I thought it was... Nope. Always been Madeline Pryor. Always. I have never come across an issue where the Goblin Queen... Oh, in Marvel Comics. Yeah, I was thinking what? Labyrinth and... Okay. Yeah. So that's where I'm going to stop my rant. Okay. <laughs> so yes, Madeline Pryor, and she is has this whole crew. And I love the way they do this because they explain how each person was corrupted because most of them were good at one point. Yeah. They show how Colossus became corrupted, how he was in limbo and went to go save Ilyana. Yeah. Ilyana! <laughs> and so I love it. And and then you see um, Beast. Storm as well. They show Storm slash maybe somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then of course yeah, Beast, Nightcrawler as well. And uh, Beast is the most obvious one because Beast is actually this beast, but he was corrupted through her because he's doing dark magic. Yep. And it's like, dude, that's why you don't mess with that voodoo. That's why you do not mess with that voodoo. And I love like this thing is really serving them well. This connection, though. Yeah, the nightcrawler. The, no, well, that, but like Scott and um Gene. And Gene, yeah. And then they uh, teleport to Pickles. Madripoor Pickles. and and everything like that, so they can go get help. Um, it's just it's super awesome. Mm -hmm. It's super interesting. Uh, I can't wait to see more of what's coming. Um, it's it's just so great. I love how they did the intro of these characters. Yes. Um, of these, like, the Hexmen, right? Yeah. Um, and, like, I'm surprised, though, that Polaris, Magneto, and these other people were, like, kind of easily taken down. I'm kind of wondering if he's just letting things happen um, to see how they play out, you know? Uh, but yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed though in Beast. I'm disappointed just because it's like, but he, they, they completely justifies why he did it. He yeah. says like, I feel inadequate because like, I'm I, not up to par with the tech because this is so leagues ahead of me that I had to do something else to get an edge. And this is what I did. And this is how I messed up. So you feel for him, but now he's just like this he's like, like mindless poor, beast. Poor pitiful me. Yeah. yeah. So. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. The art's amazing. I mean, the Inferno storyline is a favorite X-Men storyline for me, and this harkens back to that. This is just a lot of great imagery from that arc. Um, yeah, this is just amazing. The Storm, the Storm, this part of the Hex-Men harkens back to an old issue that I that my grandma actually found back in, in my in her house where I, you know, where I'm from. Uh -huh. And I'm going to be getting that comic, so I'll be sharing those comics when I get them, probably, you know, towards Thanksgiving whatnot, or probably probably beginning of December is when I'm going to get those comics. CGC, a man, if they're in good enough condition. They're in mint condition sleeves, man. Ooh, back yeah. in bag, baby. That's right. That's why you do it. That's so, right. yeah. This one, though? This is a strong buy. This is a contender. This is a great storyline. This X-Men Blue series, since it started has been a great series, just like the X-Men Gold. X I mean, they're knocking them out of the park, man. I feel like they they also did something in this book that I don't think they've been doing much in 
uh, these comics with these characters is they actually had a 60s reference mm -hmm. that they're from. And I feel like they should do that more so. In fact, I, I don't know, you remember in the animated uh, cartoon how Beast would all would be like, oh, the proverbial this or the vernacular. Like, because that's what smart people do. Like, because we all reference things that we love, but they, but super smart people, they reference things that they love, but in a different books. way, like that science, right? Oh, books, science. you know, all these scientists, stuff like that. And they make it sound a lot smarter. They don't do that anymore. And I think that's missing. That's one element that's missing from Beast for a long time. A minor poet for a minor obstacle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, I, uh, love takes, it. It takes I, you back to 92, man. Yes. It takes you back to 92. So it really does. It really does. That's great. So, yeah. Strong by Contender. Here's digital code. Q for Quentin Choir. Two. V for Victor Creed. Uh, T for tank uh f for flash there's okay l for logan uh one <laughs> c for <laughs> camp um k for kill b for uh bones uh four and h for hotel okay and again my mine is a storm by contender as well if i didn't say yeah it, so. yeah, yeah you did. <laughs> all right let's move on to hal jordan hal and the Jordan. green Lantern, go. Number 28. You no, know, it's not the Green Lantern. It's the Verde. 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 Yeah. What's lanterns? We need to just do a whole... We need to do we need it. We need a whole We need a whole We need a whole camera We need in subtitles Espanol. along the bottom. Yeah. We'll have to do one in anime, or I mean, uh, J Japanese. Uh, or as my uh, youngest calls it, Japan. Jap <laughs> yes. Japan. So, yes. Uh, writer, Robert Venditti. Penciler, Rafa Sandoval. Inker Jordi Tarragona, colorist Tome Murray, letter Dave Sharp. And we got Hal chasing the, the speedster god and the high father. And uh, he's in this nice freaking spaceship and he's pushing it to its limits trying to catch up because he's just a little slow. And he starts freaking out because it's, it's, it's like falling <laughs> apart. They're like, hey, your construct's going to fall. Like the ring's telling him, your construct's going to. Um, break if you keep on pushing it, and then his dad shows up. Yeah, because he's following God, and he's in the trail of a God. So I mean, come on, anything can happen, right? And so he's just talking about like I think about you, and he's like, oh, I used to I think said, about you too. Yeah, he said you know? your picture and stuff, and you know, it was with me to the day I died, and so forth and so on. So and, I'm not sure if that was the guy that we were seeing. I don't know, but yeah. So he, you know, he gives him a little pep talk, and he goes, "I'm gonna." Push it to the limit. Yeah. So yeah, he does, and uh, and they team up and stuff, which is crazy because it's like if he can barely catch up with him, how is how are they gonna keep on outrunning these Omega outrunning beams. the Omega beams if he can barely do it? But uh, whatever, they yeah. manage to do it, and so it's I think he's just giving them a rest essentially. Yeah. And stuff. So yeah. They they. You know, put the, the high father in the jet and, you know, just to skidoodle on. I mean, not too much to it. A lot, a lot of emotion and a lot of heart in this oh, book. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, of course, it looks beautiful. a lot of It's green. magnificent, yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, and at the end, the end page with the, the shot of a dad and, and Hal flying the jet, it just it's just amazing. Yeah. yeah. This art is fantastic. Book. This is a great written book. I mean... You can't really get too much more than this. I mean, this is the Green Lantern Corps at its... Well, this is Hal Jordan at its best. Yeah, this one was purely a Hal Jordan book. There was no Green Lantern Corps. There's no Corps. Core. Yeah. So that's the only thing that was missing from this, but I was not disappointed, so I give it a strong buy and a contender. Strong buy contender for me as well. Kapow! Time for commercial break to talk about... One of our sponsors, and here's a word actually from one of our sponsors, Age of Comics. Let's get back to books. With some Miss Marvel number 22, G. Willow Wilson as writer, Marco Faya as the artist, Ian Herring as color artist, Joe Caramagna as lettering. So this one picks up exactly where it left off. Miss Marvel revealed herself to this guy that she used to go, or uh, that I don't know if he's still in high school, but yeah, was is a classmate. And then so he kind of lets her go. He's like, "We're still enemies, though. This doesn't change much." 
and then uh, and then I love how this community really comes together. They um, you know get the courts involved, the police involved, and they're like, all right, we're gonna shut this down. And so these people are like, you can't do this, and we're like, yup, here's the paper right here, and there's the police to back us up. So he's like, all right, we got to do something about this. We got to wrap this up, you know, figure this out. So then they reinstate the previous mayor and everything like that. And then all the while she's like, I don't know what to do. I'm really in the slumps. I have no friends. Even the friends I have, I don't feel like, you know, I have. And then boom, Lockjaw shows up. She's like, you're, you're just what I needed. And she's like, uh, and then she gets uh, a gyro, um, gyro, gyro, and, you know, so she can refuel and get back into the game and stuff. And then she's doing some Mr. Fantastic stuff, it seems like, uh, she's using on people. With, and uh, it's just great how this comes together. Um, I don't think it's 100%, um, uh, you know, but it is wrapped up for the most part. And it's just warm, wonderful ending. I love it. Very touching, fantastic book. Phenomenal. Um, the colors are amazing from over here. I mean, the tone is just a little, it's like almost like a sunset look throughout mm -hmm. the entire thing. Yes. Very that warm. Is, and it has that tone, too. Like, yeah. the sun is, sun is setting, you know? Yeah, so... Strong by contender. This book is always prime. Here's the digital code F for Familia, Z for Zoro, M for Marcos, uh, R for Rigoberto, H for Hector, 5, 6, N for Novella, H for Hector, X for X, uh, Avier, M for Marcos, P for Palito. All right, next up, I've got The Amazing Spider Man number 32. And this credit goes to Dan Slott is the writer. Uh, Greg Smallwood is the artist. Jordi Belair is the colorist. And Joe Caramagna Magna <laughs> is the letter. And Alex Ross does the cover. Uh, <laughs> gosh, I'm slaughtering Joe's name. Anyway, so we, this is a Norman book. I mean, this is what it really comes down to. This is a Norman book. He's experimenting himself, trying to become the goblin again. Yeah, he's done everything medically. Um, he's seen a shrink. He's seen uh, like his top doctors. He's done like you know acupuncturists and stuff. So guess where he goes? He goes to the mystics. He goes to somewhere. I mean, I can't remember where exactly it's called. But um, his first test is to touch this gem, and it's supposed to tell him his potential, whatnot. And he has the ability to envision to learn this magic. So we see him learning this magic and whatnot, and then training his body and training his mind and physically. And then we find out that he can actually wield these magics. And um, he's supposed to choose his spirit animal or his mask. And he's leaning towards his tiger. And instead he pulls on the goblin mask. I mean, pretty freaking wicked. He then summons Spider-Man and whoops him up. I mean, straight whoops him up. And then it pulls a Dallas slash Dynasty thing where it's pretty much all a dream. But he is satisfied because he knows his potential now. So are we going to see Norman Osborn as a mystic? Who the hell knows? But this issue, this was it. This was a great self-contained issue. This was perfect. This is a good character art for Norman. And putting him in the mystics as opposed to science is actually a really good and off-the-wall idea. I, don't, I never expected it. Yeah, it doesn't sound anything like any other character, Dr. Doom. Um, <laughs> so... But, I mean, for Norman, he's always into science. Yeah. So him going into mystics. He's is like, I believe in science. Yes. I, and then now I believe in the spiritual world. So strong by contender, pick up this book. It was enjoyable. But we know even um, Stark heads that way too. So Yeah, he becomes the Sorcerer Supreme as opposed to that Generations book we were reading last week. So it, it seems to be a common theme at this point in time. But, again, I loved it. Beast. We have Beast. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, Batman Detective Comics 964. Story by James Tignon the Fourth and Christopher Silba. Sibola. God dang, I can't see his name. Sabella? Sabella. Uh, words also by Sabella. Uh, art by Carmen Car Car Carnero. Carnero. Uh, colors by Ulysses Arin Ariola. Ariola. And letters by Sal Cipriano. There you go. <laughs> See, we finish each other's sentences, the sandwiches, sandwiches. 
<laughs> so we, we we wake up in uh, in Monster Town more or less, and uh, the well, Arkham Asylum, uh, Arkham. Arkham Asylum, and we have Clayface talking to Lady Clayface, Mudface, whatever Mudface, her name is. yeah, and so he's in normal form and stuff because he has the he has the Little bracelet Arman. on and stuff. They have this nice conversation, and everything, and then they show him without the bracelet. He's been without it. They're forcing him to go without it so many hours. They're pushing the limits and everything. Yeah. And he's losing control, and he keeps on going dark and stuff and, and getting uh, pissed off and going evil. Then there's also underneath Monster, Monster Town, Town, yes, which is this little utopia they have, everything and going on. Well, they're in anarchy are having a nice little moment there for a bit, and Bats kind of interrupts. Ruins it, uh, you know, but dropping some truth bombs. Yeah, and then Clayface goes all eight. Crap, and you know, orphan kind of goes at him, and uh, then we're back with uh, anarchy and bats, and they're fighting whatnot. And yeah, it's and, and spoiler has to pick sides. Yeah, and she does, and he also gives her the information finally. So I think yeah. we're finally going to start heading down. Well, she path. wasn't there to listen to it, right? But he does reveal that. Drake is alive. But there's also connections to something else, which is that other, the what was it, that victim syndicate. Yeah, victim syndicate. So they're also making some references to that. And then Orphan and Clayface are having a moment. Yeah. Because she's also a monster, according to herself. I mean, right, right. And that's where he's not, not so alone. And that's what I was waiting for, and it was great that they delivered on that. Yeah. You know? So, because so, they've had a good connection, I feel like. And again, since we know that Tim Drake's alive, and we know who took Tim Drake, and we found out who this person is in the action comics we reviewed earlier today. Oh, um, I need to make that connection. So, yeah, this is going to be an interesting story. It is. It makes it more interesting. Because this, at the same this time. Mr. Oz guy has both Tim Drake, he's got Doomsday. And, of course, he's revealed himself to uh, Superman. So I'm actually going to enjoy the hell out of this Mr. Oz arc. Strong by contender for me, man. Strong by contender. I, I love the story. The art's a little iffy in certain spots, but eh, I can look past it. Yeah, same here. Strong by contender. All right. We got all old Wolverine. I mean, all new. All new Wolverine. I mean, not old. Uh, all new Wolverine all new. 24. Uh, Tom Taylor is a writer. Leonard Kirk is the artist. Mikhail Garland and Eric Arciniega as colorist. Corey Petit as letterer. And we had Gabby last time getting taken over by the Blood or the Brood Queen. So she is the Brood Queen. And then, of course, you know, Laura is with the Guardians. They're like, oh, yeah, we kind of got to nuke this place because it's the Brood. They're going to get out and they're going to slaughter everybody and they're just going to infect the entire universe. Mm. And, of course, you know, Rocket's like, okay, I'm going to make a big bomb. <laughs> that's that's, that's, just right that's what he does. I'm going to make a big bomb and I'm going to I'm gonna blow him up. And, <laughs> and she's like, no, I got to save her. I got to stop her. Yeah, Gabby, you know? Yeah. And then we find out who made the brood and, and who started this outbreak and they're, they're, they're going to lynch him. I mean, that's kind of the short and simple of it. They're going to lynch him. Yeah. And... Let's see here. What else is going on? Uh, of course, Laura keeps uh, hearing Gabby in her head. Man, I keep hearing her. Keep hearing her. And she's like, I I'm, I'm going to go save her. I'm going to go save her. And, of course, they're like, uh, what's she doing? She's so brave and so stupid is what Drax says. I love that. She's so brave. Who's the guy that's, that's wearing that? Well, Wolverine wore this for a little bit, but he actually it's actually his outfit, I think. Yeah. Um, it's like I don't know who that is. The tan, but it had like the necklace around yeah. it, like the bone necklace. It's a cool as heck suit, but it wasn't actually his suit. He took it from this guy, I think. Yeah, I think so. Um, who knows? But yeah, it's it's cool. Anyways, but, yeah. All of a sudden, the Brood Queen kind of just splits apart, and Gabby has healed herself inside of the Brood Queen and purged herself of the Brood. So yeah, really weird. And of course, Laura takes her back to the ship, whatnot, and. Um, and they're like discussing on how to deal with the guy that causes outbreak. And they're like, okay, well, we need to take him to look the uh, the the uh, Zandarian government or whatever. And they're like, oh no, we need to serve justice here. And then in the background, Rocket's like, airlock. 
done dealt dope. with. That was straight it's dope. cold. He is cold, and I love it, dude. Like, problem solved. Rocket is straight dope and ruthless in this book. He and is. I, like, uh, I love that. Just like this. While you were um, arguing, I took care of the problem. Yeah. <laughs> So here's the thing about being, I, this is the end of an arc. So the reason I bought this is because, well, I saw the cover. It's awesome. Oh, yeah, the cover. And as well as the fact that we just read uh, the Wolverine issue, right? Weapon X. The, the, no, no, no. Well, there was that, but that's, I hadn't read that. And then we had the Generations Wolverine. But the Generations, that was okay. the reason. And so I was like, okay, so this is probably going to be the perfect jumping on point because it would only make sense if Marvel was like, we're gonna do generations so that you get hyped for these for this for either of these characters, and then we're gonna make the next issues for both of those characters easy to jump on. Yeah, nope. no, that was. I mean, it was kind of it, it is, but it isn't care. at the same time. Like they have the intro. I've missed at the last few issues, and I, I it was right pretty easy it. to jump into. It's just that I didn't know what was going on before. It was a solid issue, but being on the outside looking in, I can also say this: I was that, totally lost at the very beginning. If I didn't have if I didn't have a prior knowledge about the brood, then I would be totally screwed on this. But for me, I've noticed that they keep on using Gabby as the plot device as they keep on putting her She's the damsel. At the yes, they always put her in this position and Laura. That's how they put the intenseness into it. Is hey, this character that we love and care about and that she loves and cares about and she has to save and it happens over and over like they keep on doing it over and over and over and it's like as a per like I said, even though I haven't been reading this, I know that that's what they keep on doing. I know it because yep. I've still been reading like the previews yeah, and, and stuff like that. Yeah, off and on and stuff. So I know that they keep and it's like you know what? How about let's try something different? Yeah, you know. I mean, granted, um, this was a great issue. It was I still loved yeah, it. it was a phenomenal issue. But it's time to change it up, guys. Change up the formula a little bit. Um, and especially like I said, I think that it should have also been set up better. Hope I'm thinking the next issue is going to be the one that's going to be the jumping on point because this seemed like it ended, it ended a, arc. a final. Yeah. So that and that makes sense too. That makes sense. So that'll work. But it was still a solid issue. So, so strong by contender from JD. I'm gonna like because of all my of all my little qualms. I'm gonna give it. I'm going to give it a buy. Okay. And I feel like the art was, you know, some parts really great and some parts, eh. Here's the digital code. Tell us which one of us is right. I mean, I, I kind of want to know. Am I right? Am I? Is he right? You know, who's got the better opinion? All right. So F for Familia, Z for Zarbon, M for Marco, W, excuse me, 9, W for Wolverine, U for Umbrella, 4, E for Eduardo, uh, D for Demon, P for Pablito, D for Demon, and X for Xavier. What we got here going on, bud? Teen Titans, 12. Uh, so did somebody uh, guess? Yes, somebody did guess. They took many guesses. We got Filippo at, uh, on Twitter, at Filippo Q, uh, took many guesses at what it was. And there's nothing against the rules on that. And uh, so... And um, you know, he he was he got the right thing, or he was close. I you know, and he got it. He eventually got it. So, uh, you know, Teen Titans number twelve is all his. It's a Dark Knights metal tie-in. Metal. It's Gotham Resistance Part One. I forgot where the uh, the credits are at. Yeah, Maybe it's a give it's me a just mess. a second. It's a mess. Because it's like Benjamin buried. Percy is the writer. Stepan Sejic is the cover artist. Mirka Andolfo is the artist. Romulo Fajardo Jr. is colorist. Corey Breen as letterer. And we got this labyrinth from the Riddler. Well, the Riddler, someone shows up to the Riddler, and I think it's a transformed Batman, um, but he looks more like a bondage Batman um, <laughs> with some bondage <laughs> Robins. Um and so, and yes. then he explains how, like, he gave these these magic, these uh, dark matter cards to each, like, to to uh, the Ice King. I mean, um, what's his name? Uh, Victor Freeze. Freeze. We have, um, who else? We have the Mad Hatter. We have Bane. We have Poison Ivy. And then the final one is 
Mm, the Riddler. And the Riddler yeah. has made this labyrinth. So the Teen Titans show up and he's like, I gotta help my dad. And so they're like, Man, they're it's funny because they're all talking crap about him. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh and then he does do exactly that. He goes off on his own in this labyrinth to try to figure it out. But then he has somebody shows up that is already in there, Green Arrow. Yep. So they team up. Um, and they take things on the riddles and obstacles. Then some other peeps show up. Harley and Croc. Yes, from the suiciders. And they, they help out a little bit. And they're like, oh, yeah, we found the center like a long time ago. We just couldn't figure out the riddle. I right. love how like she's like she's crazy, but she's also smart, but she's dumb. You know, like she's like ditzy. So, um, <laughs> anyway, the riddle is as follows. I'm going to pause the timer for a second while I read the riddle exactly, okay? So the riddle is as follows. If you throw me from the window, I'll leave a griefing wife. Bring me back, but in the door, and you'll see someone giving life. Which is a hell of a riddle. I literally sat there for a good 10, 15 minutes on this page trying to figure out the answer on my own without spoiling it. Yeah. Uh, I, it took a little bit. Don't, don't spoil it. It took a little bit. Don't spoil it. But I got it. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, and Robin, he figures it out while they're taking on this giant, um, it kind of looks like a minotaur yeah. um, robot thing and stuff. And then I love how... Nigma looks like like a metal version of Nigma, yeah. like or emo screamo version. Of, you know, like it's so cool. I it's, love like he, what he they're looks doing like my with chemical this. romance. Red, red. Um, like the crow meets <laughs> the Riddler. It's interesting. It's so awesome. And then they reveal the actual son of this bondage bat. Um, of course from this dark universe. It's yeah. pretty... Because I was like, where is he? I was wondering that the whole time yeah. at the beginning because I was like, yeah, he's as other ones, but where is... And they reveal it, and that's cool. And then they uh, go in... Now, the next layer is... Um, Victor, and they have uh, another guy that they show on the cover um, that's part of the fam. Yeah. But... Uh, but he's just real quick at the end. So, anyways. So this code goes to our winner here. So, um, yeah, we're we're gonna give it to him. But it is a strong buy. It's a strong buy. It's it good. is a contender. It's absolutely. This well, is a gr it's a great book, man. I mean, it's well written. It's kind of a great art. I mean, yeah, it's, the art works for where for, for what it is. For what it is, because I mean, it's, metal. it's metal. It's metal. the metal. Metal. And uh, you know, Are it's you a different metal? kinds of Titans book. Are you well, metal? It's interesting. Are you metal? It's a tie-in, you know. It's metal. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> old man Logan X X Logan. X old man Logan. Old man Logan. Logan. Anyways, uh, number twenty-eight. Ed Brisson is the writer. Mike Diodato Jr. is artist. Frank Martin colorist. Corey Petit letter. So we uh, pick up with old man Logan and uh, Clinton Martin. The old, old, the old men versions. Old men versions. They come across the uh, one of the Hulk children. Yes, that's stealing the pigs, and it's apparently she's starving, so that's why she's yeah. stealing it. It's that's all it was. So he lets her have it, and then uh, we see a similar um, looking Hulk, and she falls and in, in to the El Maestro, and he's she's like, oh, he killed us, you know, he killed all the other Hulks because that was a, he was just sending the message yeah. through the messenger. You know, and then one of the Hulks calls him out, and they throw down, and he's, he's like, like, "Man, yeah. bitch, I am your daddy. I'm your daddy. I'm gonna leave you a smack now." Whap! <laughs> and he's like, "You don't like getting your hands dirty, old man, old man." And he's like, "Oh!" He, and he he rips him in half. Oh, he demolishes him. It's it amazing. Is sick. And so they're all like, "Okay, that shuts them down." And then you have Hawkeye. And old man Logan teaming up mm. this current time, and so they're like, you know, there's there's that tenseness there and everything. Yeah. It's really really good. And he tells him like the horrible future, whatever, and stuff like that. And then they do their own thing, and they're getting more clues and stuff. They find this place, and then that girl returns yeah, to kind of pay the favor. She too. goes, um, like, yeah, Daddy's crazy. He's he's a little loco. He's gonna he's gonna kill everybody. I mean, he's gonna slaughter everybody. Everybody gonna go boom. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's, so, that's the short and simple. Everybody gonna go boom. 
man. Yeah, because a, what we don't know his exact plan. Well, yeah, we don't know. He maybe are trying to irradiate everybody. He maybe trying so to turn just, them all into Hulks. Uh, we don't know, or knows. just kill them all. Out. He's already de- demonstrated his superiority. I mean, physically and, and intellectually. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so this is a strong buy. This is a contender. This is an amazing book. I like the colors. I like the way the story's going. I like the greediness of the art. Man, there's just a lot about this book I like. So, yes, definitely strong buy and contender. Let's keep it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Let's keep See, it. See, we're, we're on the same wavelength we, we here. We're simpatico, man. Mm-hmm. Simpatico. All righty. Got some some TNMT Universe. TNMT Universe, yes. Uh, four ninety nine. Uh, this is number fourteen. Um, this is continuing the same stories from before. Uh, which is writers Eric Burnham uh, with Sophie Campbell, artist Sophie Campbell, colorist Brittany Peer, and then the second story is story art letters Sophie Campbell. And so this one, uh, there's this like Yakuza guy, and he has plans to take out. Karai as soon as she comes out and stuff and then the daughter's like wait um it's my fault that she got shot and that she came after you know and this is uh this is dishonorable and he's like you know screw that talk he's like that's for kids you know and she's like all right well I'm gonna go warn her so that's what they do and then they have to go through this trial there's these ghosts but they're like uh these spirits and they're like if you attack them then they attack you but you have to strike first so they essentially are just they're doing some like uh some emperor style crap talking to get them to attack you know um and so we all know who's the most emotional one though and that's and that's what happens well this girl she goes to the trainer of karai to tell him and so they're gonna go help her and stuff and so they're getting through these trials together they do find the sword but then there's like this mole beast that they have to defeat in order to get this weapon and it's pretty sick so, and then the, the second story for part three is you have, uh, we have, um, Koya is fighting this, this mole beast because there's this like amulet thing on her chest that's like controlling her and stuff. So yeah, interesting, good stuff. Awesome. I love it. Uh, yeah. Phenomenal. Strong by contender. Dude, when you're saying there's some epic crap talking, I'll keep thinking of your mother is a, a hamster and your father smells like elderberries or something. <laughs> So we'll get to this in just a second. I've got Titans number 15. Oh, I did read that, actually. Really? Yes. Okay. It was okay. I mean, yeah, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad, but I love dick, so you know me. Of course you love dick. I had dick. to get more dick. <laughs> anyway, Even so if t- it's not, like, the best dick I've ever had, you know. <laughs> it's still more dick. It's still, yeah. So anyway, uh, Dan Emmett is a writer. Uh, Brett Booth is the pencils. Uh, Norm Repmund is the inks. Uh, Josh Reed is the letters. And Andrew Dollhouse is the colors. And we figure out who is the traitor, and it's Dick. Dick is the yes, traitor. They, well, Roy yeah, we'll, discovers we'll, it. We'll, we'll explain here in a second. Anyway, um, throughout this whole thing, we see that Wally is writing a handwritten letter. And it's basically his resignation. I mean, that's kind of what it sits as. It's heartfelt. I mean, it's really good re- letter. Narration. I love it. You can yeah, see it in the background. Brilliant. Um, him and, and uh, Diana are kind of flirting with each other, more or less. And, and they're like, hey, Roy's like, hey, Dick is the traitor. He's the traitor. He's the traitor. And he's like, okay, well, uh, it wasn't me. I didn't know. I just found out. And I used it to our advantage so we can hunt him down. And yeah. Yeah, this is, it's all part of the plan because that's Dick and ba- who's his who's his mentor? Bats. Batman. And he's a solo guy. And he he's just a, he's a master of like secrets, I feel like, yeah, pretty much, right? Pretty much. And he's like, there's too much Batman in me, you know? Because he wants to get back Karen's memories. That's right. really what it's And happening. that's what he's doing. And so he does this trace back on them. That's what he was doing. Uh-huh. And Garth does come out and say, hey, I love Lilith. I mean, that's my bitch, man. I mean, I'll, I'll <laughs> I mean that's, that's, that's the literally of it. That's what he's, that's, that's the short and simple of it. <laughs> and they, they do have this nice heartfelt moment, yeah. but not... And, um, of course, Wally is, uh, is just like, um, he, he kind of is just trying not to push himself to where he's, his, his heart thing, I guess is a heart thing. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. It is, is happening. And, um, Simon gets teleported away or, you know, brought to this place where the Titans go up against, I guess, D- uh, Mal and some other person. And, um, yeah, Simon goes crazy and possessed. 
and I, it looks like Mal stabs Dick through the chest. I mean, yes, like Yamcha style. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty brutal. And um, yeah, to prevent this, Wally does some really weird stuff and flash time travels like. He like reverses time yeah. just within this short bubble to before he like like a healing like a healing way, but it also yeah, and it, it pushes him and he flatlines, and that's which is the, crazy because it's at the exact same time that he's like, this is my last, this is my last mission. So wow, lots of drama here, great art. Um, this was definitely not the Wally West show, even though that was kind of pushed to the side and or in the little. Well, it was, was the like, main narration, but the way that it did it, it didn't feel that way. Because no. you can hear his voice in your head, but you're viewing all this other stuff happening. So it, it. And there was actually a lot of good dick in this. Yeah. So this was just a solid issue. Strong buy. It's a contender for me, man. I, no I, doubt. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it immensely. Yeah. Same here. All right. Next up, we have some Wars of Starness. Yes, number 36, Star Wars number 36. Jason Ayer is the writer. Salvador La Roca is the artist. Edgar Delgado is the colorist. Uh, Clayton Coles. Coles as a letter. These are the droids you're looking for. And indeed, because oh, this one was awesome because it also <laughs> had an awesome narration that the whole time it was narrating about the R2 unit. Like, yeah, the R2 unit is a basic unit that can only do this. It's like an but, infomercial. But if upgraded, it could do a little bit better. Billy and Mays so, here. Yeah, and Let so... Let me tell you how the R2 unit works. Well, it wasn't exactly like that. No. But, oh man, and I love this art. Like, oh my Art's god, amazing. this photorealism is just mind-blowingly good. Or R2 just like, is just systematically taking me. out everybody on Vader's Star Destroyer. And he's using the ship, though. The thing is, he's using the ship. It's not, like, ridiculous like in the actual prequels. Yeah. Where, like, he was doing it himself with he all this ridiculousness. Helmet and smoke he smoke used, screen and he let uses them shoot the each other. He uses the, uh, the... elevators, the vehicles, the, the ship itself. The I mean, ship itself, yeah. Like, it's um, security measures to take out these different platoons. Blows of, them out the airlock, sets them on fire. Throws them in the... the Trash, trash compactor, uh, compactor. Um, um, all to save C3 his PO. lover. I mean, uh, best friend C three PO. Um, and it was great. You they even like he takes over uh the, the jet that they showed up in, and he flies it. And even Vader is like, this isn't like they're like this is an expert pilot. Well, I don't. He kind of says that, but not to the same limit. And they're like, this is interesting. He's like, there's no life on this. Yeah. And, and I wonder if he knows to any level because it's. I mean, it's his style. Too, it's his know? tactics. Yeah. It's his so, flying ability. And it's great because I think this is all stuff that has been put into this droid and over time. Like He's never been wiped. And ex yes. So he has like this experience built up. And so it's just like, this is what can be with a, you know, with an R2 unit. And then they also show this. Scar Squadron at the end. Yeah, the, the, it was the the. It looks like a couple of different YT thirteen hundred styles. Of course, the Falcon and a couple of different X wings. I, mean, dude, and then we had the Scar Squadron, like you said. I mean, nerd. Oh. That nerd talk just gets me all moist when you talk like that. Mm, um, moist. <laughs> so. <laughs> phenomenal issue like this is so good i thought it was gonna be dumb because i was like oh it's, it's gonna R2, be an r2 nah oh, this was straight this dope. was wicked yes it was uh, so good and it wasn't like i didn't feel like it was, it was too cheesy. ridiculous yeah it wasn't like this is dumb this is so over the top it was like okay this is, this is viable yeah all right you know oh you can outfly vader yeah to a degree because vader taught him i mean he was anakin skywalker's droid for what how many years of clone wars at least three years in the clone wars and yeah, he's been flying around with Luke for however many years at this point. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's it's so good. So strong by contender. Strong by I'm gonna, contender. I'm gonna hold on to this one too. Heck yeah. So too good to be true. Too good to be true. All right, last but not least, we have Ziff Flash. Thirty Blood Work Part One. Yeah, it was. This is a very interesting book. And the word interesting. Indeed, Joshua Williamson does the script. Neil Googe is the art. Ivan Plasencia is the color. Steve Wands is the letter. Yes, sir. Plasencia. I love how this one and has been focusing on the 
the, the CSI work. The CSI work, his personal life, because now he can't use the flash powers all the time. It's also showing how the flash powers, the negative, the negative powers force, are affecting, are affecting him. He is a negative guy now. He's very emotional. And everyone's noticing that. In fact, this girl's and, like, you're a very positive person, and, and you seem really negative recently. I like, mean, we all have downtimes and stuff, and, and Singh gives him crap. And he's like, dude, if you don't like what I'm doing, just freaking fire me. Just just get it over with, Dude, man. it's so intense. It's I mean, so it's intense. so emotional. And then this chick has a heart to heart with him and says, "Man, nah, you're acting like how I was when I was dumped." That's that's the short. Right, which he got dumped, and yeah, she's yeah. like, "Okay, I understand, you know, but still." Yeah. And so he also discovers this guy that's been stealing these blood samples, and then you get the backstory of him. Yeah, he had what, like some uh, some weird genetic disease, hemophiliac. Or yeah, hemophiliac. Um, and so he did all these experiments with blood, especially like people that have like powers really and stuff, powers, abilities. Yeah. And so he's discovered he's has abilities because he's been experimenting on himself. And he can control blood. Yes. He is a bloodbender. So, uh, yeah, it is cool how that plays out. And Flash kind of throws the negative speed force energy at him, knocks him out of the building. And everybody's he like, he thinks he killed him and everybody does too. <gasps> They're like, the oh Flash my God, is a Flash murderer. killed somebody. He's a murderer. He's and a he's murderer. like, oh no, I killed someone, I killed someone. But this guy is... He's zombified. He's uh, near He's near invincible. Pretty much. So, uh, yeah. And we may have a challenge from the Flash. We will see soon. Because, yeah, this is really weird. And he does call himself Bloodwork. Really weird name. I mean, I, mean, I guess it's part of his job doing blood work, but... I mean, he's a coroner, so he's actually, but yeah. So yeah, I mean, we had some great issues. Strong my contender for that. That for was me. that was too. Yeah, same here. So we ready? Let's let's dude. the stack. Let's let's go through this stack. So obviously, what we just covered. So um, I know what my runner up is. My runner up is Ben Riley, Scarlet Spider, number seven. That death picture was amazing. I posted it on the group chat when I read this book. Fan freaking tastic. My back and bag of the week is a little bit more complicated because I got a couple of books that I wanted to do with it. I mean, the action comics was amazing. The uh, the Teen Titans was great. The both the Weapon X and the X Men Blue were amazing. Uh, the Defenders, I mean, we saw it in a very special event there. I'm going to give it to Star Wars, though, man. That R2 freaking comic was just out of this world. I mean, I did not expect that. So, what was it? Star Wars number 20, 25? 36. 36. 36. Way off. But this is my B-Bow. All right, buddy. What you got? What you got? Okay. So what you, what you, what you want? All right, man. Uh, I am going to have to go with Old Man Logan as my runner-up. There was a lot of great moments in this. You know, just it was so fantastic, especially that stuff where I loved it when he told him, like, oh, hey, what, what, how was I in your universe and stuff? And he's like, oh, you married Spider-Man's daughter. Oh, and he's yeah. like, what? what? Spider-Man's <laughs> daughter? She's not even born yet. Not married her? Yeah. And it's uh, he's like, what the heck? And so he's like, I know I'm supposed to keep it shut, but I'm just curious. And so, like, I just love the way that uh, Diodato does his paneling. It's so awesome. And then just, like, how this thing came back to to help him, you know, this this uh, child, Hulk, uh, that She-Hulk girl and stuff. And I'm interested to see what's coming. So, but I'm going to have to give it to the metal number two because it's metal, man. And this is what I was waiting for. I was like... I know that it's coming. That's why I was like, uh, I know, and it was so cool, man. You have Green Arrow, you have Beetle, you have Constantine, you have Zatanna. Uh, they're all, you know, everyone's chasing down, the whole Justice League is chasing down Batman. You have Dick, and he pretends to be Batman. Um, he's one of the pretend Batmans, because there's multiple ones. And one of yeah, them and they're freezes, all the Bat family. One of them freezes the Flash's brain and makes it like 12 pounds because it's frozen, and he just goes, doop. And stops running because he can't move. It's too yeah, heavy it's so great. Um, but the it was so awesome too. They lure him into the swamp, so swamp, swamp thing something. attacks yeah. them, 
And then the other the part Rouge though, the, the clay face. Yes. So like I said, Superman gets Superman's crack. like, oh yeah, I know your heartbeat, Bruce. So I knew you were in the vehicle the whole time. And so he goes there and he gets him out. And so Batman placed his heartbeat like emulators or whatever inside of Clayface. But like, and so you think that it's Superman kills bad. Batman by punching him through the chest, but it was actually Clayface. And it was like, oh, that was freaking brilliant, dude. That was freaking sick. And then, like I said, just the way the whole thing plays out and now that Batman is essentially the bad guy, of course, you know, the, the Legion of Doom and the baby, the baby dark the side baby dark was side. like adorable, but so awesome at the same time. And he's like, I'll use this if I have to. And he's like, oh, and then the, those Batman, those, the, 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 the Joker kids, the, um, the Robin, the Jokers. Robins were creepy as hell. The, we have bondage Batman. <laughs> S and M Batman. Uh, yeah, S and M Batman. Yeah, which really makes me think of like, what is that band that does the? Uh, God, what is their names? Where they were kind of like the lead singer was like very bondagey type clothes. Um, that was the rock band. Uh, you mean God. like Rammstein? No, 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 no. It was like an older, more like old school, like rock. Um, the lead singer like turned out to be gay, and it was like okay. Oh, you talking makes- about Henry Rollins? Um, or um, Judas Priest. Ju- Judas Priest. Judas Priest. That's what I'm thinking of. I'm going like, this is very like Judas Priest. And uh, I Scott Schneider in his Twitter, I think I think it was him, he said, in each issue of Metal, there's someone that gives the horn. So now I want to like pick this thing apart and go like, who does it? Who does it? Where is it? I want him to see where it is. So this week, um, we were given the horns. Um, but yeah, so I want to find that. This is, you know... I want to reread it because it has that rereadability. There's not a lot of comics where you want to do that. Um, and it's just so good. So many layers. And then this cabal, you know, this metal cabal looks freaking sick, dude. I can't wait to see them like just totally wreck everybody um, and stuff. And yeah, it was, it was superb. Cool. Cool. That's our reviews for the week. Let us know what you think. Yeah. Tell us what your B-Bow is, uh, what you thought of these books. And like I said, I'll keep on taking um, guesses for um, for the, the tone. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Um, I posted the Dragon Ball Super one, episode 107 last night. Very good. Uh, really interesting, actually. It was a, a Fakatsu F, so the Revenge of Frost, of not Frieza, but Frost. Very good episode. Check it out. Uh, tonight we're getting some Rick and Morty, so I'll probably be posting that sometime tomorrow morning if I can. Um, it, the links get taken down pretty quick, so um, I normally post it about 5 a.m. and you know mountain time if you're wanting to check it out. Uh, 5 a.m.? Yeah, that's when oh, I post okay. it. That's what I post it. It shows tonight at 11.30 Eastern time, so check it out if you want to check it out live. Which, if you like fighting animes, and one that's also kind of old, like older, Kanichi, that one's so good. It's really solid. It's on Hulu, so and they have the full because it's one really long season. Uh, so, so, when are you gonna take the eight hours and watch Legion, man? You have yet to watch Legion. 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 What are you talking about? Talking about Xavier's kid, you know, X Men. We saw that. You you've actually seen it. Yeah, I've already. Yeah, we, talk, okay. we used to talk about it all the time. Okay. While it was on, I, d- I didn't watch it all the way through, oh, okay. but I watched it each week it came out. Oh, okay. That's my other buddy that has. Yeah, because you it. were like, "Oh yeah, watch some anime," and I was like, "That's not an anime for one." Oh, yeah. And two, I've already seen Legion, so I was like, "I don't know why you're telling." Unless there's a Legion anime that would be cool that man. I didn't know of. Um, I don't know. There's but... new promos for Gifted out. I'm starting to get more and more hype for that coming up soon. Um. We got our DC CW TV coming out within the next three, four weeks, something like that. Sort of Flash, Arrow, Supergirl, Legends of the Mars is going to start right back up soon. We're going to have the Inhumans. So I'm not really so hyped about that anymore because I've heard so many horrible reviews about it now. Uh, but I'll, I'll check it out. You know. Yeah, we'll check it out for sure. Oh, we'll, oh there's the Star Trek Discovery that yeah. comes out soon. Um, so I'm interested in that. I've heard that. I've actually heard good things about that already. Yeah. Um, I heard Orville was funny, but also really bad. I've heard, yeah, yeah mixed reviews. I've That's heard mixed I've reviews. Heard as well. Um, so, but to me, I go, 
it if it's him, I know it's gonna be mixed reviews. Just yeah, because some seven, of his stuff is hit or miss. I mean, the cavalcade of cartoon comedy got some poor reviews, but man, it was amazing. It was so hilarious. Like a lot of his movies, I'm just like, eh. Like a million ways to die in the West. Yeah, I mean, like there's funny parts, but overall, but like wasn't the good. stuff is not that great. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen it, so if, if you have, tell us what you think of it. Yeah. Um, I also did, and this one's kind of old news, but I have heard that they did pick a Starfire, and they also picked a dick. Um, I, I haven't heard about everybody's dick, cast except for Garth. But I think there was Our there Garth was the Young. other chick, Starfire and uh, Raven, Raven, and and they both look great. Yeah. So that's one show I'm really toast jacked to- up for. Yeah. Titans and Young Justice are going to be amazing, man. I'm I'm so hyped about that. The animated Young Justice. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Season three of Season Young three, Justice. Season three. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um. So yeah, I mean, besides and then, there's and then there's the PlayStation Plus stuff. That stuff hasn't really changed, I don't think. No. Uh. So and same thing weeks. for the Xbox Live stuff. So you know, get you some Battlefield Three now because it's uh free on Xbox Live for the Xbox Three Sixty and Xbox One. So. Check it out. Very good game. So yeah. Even though I don't have an Xbox. I think that's I think that's it. Yeah, because everything else is just coming up. It's getting to be Halloween time. It's getting to be Santa Fe Comic Con time. And uh we're getting hype about that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're gonna do everything we can. We're gonna come to you with some coverage. We're gonna come to you with some some interviews with some uh cosplayers, because that's that's what I like. I like interviewing the cosplayers as opposed to anybody else. But Maybe that'll change this year, so we'll see. Um, also, I had some announcements. We we talked about this a little bit before, and we'll talk more about it after um, off the air. But something uh, is we don't get paid to do this. We've never gotten paid to do this. I know we say sponsors, but straight up, this is how our sponsors go. I went to them, told them, hey, we do this thing. Uh, I said, can you give us a discount? Thing is, you can get a regular discount at the comic book places, 15% off if you're a subscriber there. Um, but because we promote these comics for them, they give us a little bit more for their graphic novels and, or just whatever, yeah, like whatever. with twins, it's whatever we order from the book. And then from, from age, it's, you know, pretty much whatever we get from their shop. Um, well, actually not everything, but just comic book stuff, uh, not like statues and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but, and then same, uh, and then, you know, gamers, gamers, we have a thing with them where I think they let us like borrow games and I think they give us like. A 15% off or something like that but I haven't gone a long time I need to I need to step up but my my setup over here yeah. is, is down right now we're way the school. heck out here in Rio Rancho and that's way the heck out there now I'm gonna like yeah it, it's it's a long drive for both of east us side yeah it's it's a long drive for both of us so I mean so but um so we don't get paid to do this and that's something is like and I've been doing a lot like I do the nerdy fitness vlog I was doing that every other day. I'm only doing it weekly now, um, so I need to pull. So I pulled back on that. Um, I edit all the videos. I make all the posts. Um, I run a lot of this stuff myself, and so I just can't. I can't anymore because um, I I'm losing a lot of sleep, and I need my sleep, especially for work, because I have to be focused, have to be vigilant, and, um, and everything point. like that. Yeah. So um, so that's. So the comic cast is going to be based off of my days off. Like that's when it's going to get recorded. Yeah. Um, right now my days off are Sunday, Monday. That's why we're recording. We've been recording it Sunday. And so we're going to be doing that as my days are off these days. Then I'm then in a few weeks. And that's the thing is every six to eight weeks, they change and move on to the next two days. So it's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday. And my schedule changes about twice a year. It seems like so. <laughs> so that's, that's how that's going to go. Um, because, Otherwise, I have to get up early, and it did, like getting up at six is just horrible um, for me because I'm just way too tired uh, for work. So it's like, nope, I'll just wait until my day's off. You know, that's the thing is, if we were getting paid to do this, hey, oh, yeah, we'd I would be doing time. it. You know, religiously on the same day. Yeah, we would be doing it. Hey, get things read as much as we can early. You know, then when the books come out, do it, and then boom, out like Thursday. You know, yeah. or Friday. You know what I mean? But, but that's not the situation that we're in. Hopefully we can be in that situation because I want to do some things. Right, like We do have a connection with DC right now because of Scott Schneider. Thank so you, we Scott. Do, so Appreciate we do it. get the comics from DC on Fridays. Um, not all of them. No. Um, but but a good ma- majority of them. of them, yes. 
And so, so that helps me get ahead. But as far as Marvel's considered in any indie, no. In fact, indie publishers do not, I've noticed that it's really hard to find previews yeah. um, for indie publishers. So, um, you know, but like I said, I'll see if I can get in connection with Marvel and we can, and that'll, cause then we can do it, I don't know, earlier, but at least, you know, be more on top of this type yeah. of thing. Maybe even do like written reviews if I can get them that early and start doing preview pages. You know, I'd like to do that type of thing. But like I said, this is all based off of time. And that's the thing is we, I've been, a lot, uh, we've been putting, we put all our time and money into this. Uh, so nobody's paying us. If you want to pay us, then yeah. hey, I'm more likely to go, hey, this is your, in fact, that's part of the reason that I have not done like a Patreon is because I've gone like, oh, I don't think people should pay me to review, to do what I like doing. Yeah. But if you want it consistently, like every Saturday or on a certain day, or you want these certain codes or whatever, Talk hey, that's fine. If that's something you want, then we can work it out and we can set it up. But until we know there's a need for it, we're not going to do it yeah. because that's just not me. Um, so, and and there will be more stuff down the line, like I said, that we'll be discussing in regards to the comic cast and everything else that we do. Um, because I I even I was an Amazon affiliate, but nobody was no buying purchasing. the stuff. So it's like even if you get clicks, it doesn't matter if no one's buying anything. They they cut ties with you. So yeah. it's like eh, whatever. whatever. Um, so yeah, so uh, that's that's that on that end. I'm still editing videos. I think the next one coming out should be. I decided to just screw it. I'm just gonna put out the cutscenes videos. No, uh, <laughs> no commentary, whatever. Just it's out there. And then same like I am working. I'm almost done with the Joker interactions with people because that's the thing is when I did the tour, I cut out all his interactions with people because I just wanted the tour of the place. Yeah. But now I go. I want to just put in his interactions with people because a lot of that stuff's funny and interesting and cool. Yeah. You know, especially because he's like, they're like, a lot of times they'll be like, hey, can we get a picture of this? He's like, no. Okay. No, you know. <laughs> like he does this, he has that on point it's Joker Jesse, like. man. I mean, he does the Joker laugh though that's more like the animated one, not the. Not the. the not the new Jared Leto one. Yeah. yeah. Not that um, one. So yeah, but anyways. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he can do that one. He We've only seen him in that one once, and I don't know yeah. if we got him to do the laugh. But anyway, so yeah. So that's what's coming. And then I'm going to – because of that, I'm probably going to start trying to do like a week, a different like con or different type of video, you know, like from a different venue um, and do it like that until we run out, and then it's going to be – you know. Yeah. By then, we'll have, we'll have more nice. stuff from Santa Fe. Yeah. So uh, that'll be great and stuff. And uh, uh, yeah. I've got a little project that I've been working on for the show here, so I'm going to – be toying around with it for the next few weeks, maybe a month or so. It depends on how my time management becomes because it's quite the daunting task. And um, I'll, I'll probably keep you guys up to date as best I can, you know, because it's just something I've been wanting to do for a while. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, again, I'll just keep you up to date. And that's the other thing. If you want to like be part of the group, you want to be part of Talk Nerd to Me, we can make Talk Nerd and Me prestige worldwide, yeah. you know? I'm cool with that. You want to start your own sector of talking to me out in Oklahoma or BFE or whatever, or you want to, you want to contribute in any way, by all means, you know, let's, let's talk, you know, Nerd out about fantasy football and put it in a video, let whatever. Us, yeah. Let's help you out. No um, deal. Let's do it. Especially if you're local, I've actually reached out to way too many local people and they've just, uh, kicked my dick in the dirt, so to speak. Um, but yeah, uh, you're nightwing in the dirt. Yeah. So, <laughs> but anyways, uh, so yeah, remember you can find all of our stuff on TNT and the show. show. That's everything. Yeah, Facebook, yeah, yeah. Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, uh, anything else, our hotmail, our email, you know, everything you want to hit us up. You want to invite us to your event, you know, your area, whatever, you know, anything, anything at all, send it our way, join the community group, all the good stuff, all the good things. And uh, hopefully, eventually, we can do like shirts, sell shirts, and stuff like that, and even more, do more so down the road. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, talk nerdy to me. We'll talk nerdy to you. Keep your host hungry, folks. Comics.